Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be looking at Casper on Rust, the alpha release. I know this is a bit late, but we're still going to look at it and see what it looks like on the alpha release on an actual node. And we're going to take a look what Casper actually looks like on the alpha release on the actual network. But before we get into the video, I've just started a Patreon. There's going to be loads of benefits to join in. I'm adding more and more every day. So it's a price of $9.50 per month and there's only one membership level. These are the benefits so far, but we're going to be adding more and more. Link for this is in the description below. If you want one-on-one -on -one crypto mining help, a tracker for my portfolio to see what I'm doing, early video access, mining updates, buy and sell alerts for cryptocurrency, community discussion and general support on crypto or crypto investing. And if you feel like you want any of this, then join up today. Link for that is in the description below. Now let's get into the actual alpha release. So right here is a Medium article from April 16th. I know this is about eight days ago, but the actual alpha release, I believe, came out on the 19th of April. So only five days ago. Here it says, introducing the Rusty Casper alpha release as an alpha stage product in its initial phases of development. Although this version is designed as a seamless drop-in for the existing Casper Go node, this will release primarily apply to experienced Casper command line users who want to help us evaluate and stabilize this fresh code base. So they've released it on alpha that you can use through the Casper Go node. Upcoming updates will include new features with a hard fork schedule to be announced shortly. So that will be for the full release of Rust on the Casper network. While the alpha release is open for testing to anyone interested, we recommend having a command line experience due to the involvement of testnet mining, CLI wallet and Casper node usage. So you've seen this a little bit with the new Ironfish testnet that we just had. And now it's obviously moved into its main net. But for that, you actually have to run your own node and you could gain a CLI wallet through that. A lot of people use the testnet, so they had experience in command line and actually using the Windows PowerShell and stuff like that to run nodes. General users and holders will not need to take any action in this stage. The Rust rewrite is designed to increase speed gradually through testing. Still, there will be no immediate change in the block speed from Golang to Rustlang. Instead, improvements will be rolled out incrementally over time, accompanied by a release in a hard fork schedule. So we already know this, I've covered this in many other videos. So they're not going to go for just a straight block number. Instead, they're going to incrementally increase it and see if the network can handle it over time. And then they'll probably find a point where they think it's good enough. And that number is supposed to be around 32 blocks per second. But they're going to try push it further than that and see if the network is still stable after that. So there's just a couple of questions here that are, I guess, popular questions. Is the Rust rewrite a hard fork? Yes, eventually. However, Rust won't hard fork until the block rate increases. A hard fork schedule will be released. So that's going to be coming out, obviously, when they've tested this a large amount. Do Rust and Go nodes communicate with each other? Yes, Rust and Go nodes can communicate with each other until the block rate speeds up. So these two will still go hand in hand until the actual block rate is increased by the team and then it will only be Rust nodes that can be used. As Rust is integrated and tested, is there a version change such as 1.0 or 1.1 or 2.0? As Rust is developed and integrated, the version numbers will change to reflect the updates and improvements. So there is gonna be version changes. What should node runners do to prepare for Rust integration? Well, it's already come out. So you could have node runners familiarize themselves with the CLI Additionally, running a node would help the testnet and mainnet. If the node is being used, they can run another instance. So it's all about actually collating a bunch of nodes and test it as much as you can. This is what the whole Ironfish running the node was about. So you incentivize people to run the node and then you could have more instances and that gives them more data to run on and actually use to help the network and improve it. So how can you help test the Rust node? The release package contains an executable file called caspad which can be utilized similarly to the Golang Caspad executable. Except for a few occasional command line options, both testnet and mainnet nodes will be needed. Can anyone with the correct specs run a Rust node? If you could run a Go node, then you should be able to run a Rust node without issues. However, the node currently doesn't prune data. While resync and only covers recent days, a running node continues to accumulate data. It's worth noting that the Rust database is more compressed, about half the size. Experiments demonstrated in that database size reached approximately 30 gigabytes after running continuously for 25 days. Will I need to do anything with my wallet? No, however, the CLI wallet is recommended if you intend to participate in this testnet. 
so you can actually gain that whilst you're going through the command line. Do miners have to be aware or make any changes while integrating Rust? Miners do not have to make any changes while Rust integrates, as mining will be conducted on a testnet during the alpha phase. However, miners should stay informed about the updates and developments related to Rust and ensure that they are prepared for future changes. Don't worry if you're not tapped in, so make sure you subscribe to see that video when it comes up. What's the process for using a testnet? How to get test coins? To use the Rust testnet, run the CLI with an added argument. These testnet allow the users to test and experiment with features such as mining without risking real coins. However, CPU mining is recommended for testnet. That's normally how testnet goes, is you use CPU mine and not GPU mine. What are the risk of mining on mainnet? Mining on the mainnet is disabled and strongly discouraged until the software reaches a mature state while testing the Rust Alpha. And then lastly, it says overall the Rust Alpha release signifies a critical step towards a more robust and efficient Casper platform. It facilitates a realistic adoption as a cryptocurrency for everyday life, such as, you know, an actual cryptocurrency that we can use as a monetary value, such as a dollar or a pound or a euro. This is enhanced performance and scalability, ensuring a promising future for all its users and contribute to the growth and innovation of the ecosystem. As Casper continues to evolve, it aims to become an indispensable tool for daily transactions, providing a seamless and secure financial experience for users across the globe. So here it has the GitHub, and I'll link that in the description so you guys can actually go check that out if you want to. If we click on it here, it just gives us a bunch of files that we can download and it's an executable, as they said at the top. So you just run the executable and then you can kind of play around with it if you are if you are familiar with command line options. Anyway, if you don't want to test it yourself, Michael Sutton here provides what it actually looks like to have these amount of blocks on the network. So right here, we actually have a picture from him and it's documenting Casper. And this is what the network would look like when it is run on Rust. Now for some comparison, this is what the current network looks like right now. This is uh, getting to a block height of around four, as we can see there, but sometimes it's only one or two or three. Now here we have block heights upwards of 20, 30. And right here, the Rust rewrite testnet results so far reach 44 blocks. So technically 44 blocks from top to bottom. Now all these red blocks are obviously invalid right now just seeing how much actual blocks we can put on the network before it starts to invalidate blocks. And Michael Sutton actually said this, this snapshot is beautiful, but the explanation is slightly misleading. While we are testing Rust nodes on testnet, we hadn't yet modified testnet blocks per second. So Casper testnet blocks per second is still one blocks. That's why we are seeing here is probably GPU mining rigs joining the mining on the testnet. As we saw in that Medium article that we were just reading, GPU mining rigs shouldn't be on the testnet, it should be mainly CPUs. And creating a burst of blocks in higher rate before the difficulty adjustment algorithm kicked in. On the attached image, you can see the beginning of this burst and the following images. So this burst here is GPUs actually joining the network on Casper on Rust. And then this is downstream led to all of this accumulating. And then as it came in, it says here, the reason many blocks is red is that the parameter K controlling the number of allowed parallel blocks is only set to 18. If we really had a test not on 40 blocks per second, we would set K to 720, so you'd see similar blocks. So it's basically invalidating blocks right now because the K parameter is still controlled. Now, one of the main things that Dagnite is going to be doing is taking away this parameter for K. So you don't actually have to set it, it can just go up and down depending on how much blocks are being produced on the network. Then lastly, on a side note, it's worth mentioning that with future coming Dagnite, you don't need to estimate this parameter in advance, so the network would adjust the burst more naturally. So this is what I was talking about, you don't need to estimate the parameter K in advance. So that's it for a little update on Casper on Rust, it's only in the alpha stages. It'll probably move on to beta soon enough, and then actually come onto the main net in, I wanna say around three months, you know, there's always going to be setbacks and stuff like that when you're working with computers and command lines and code and stuff like this. So we need to just wait for this to come out. And when it does come out, I think it is going to be truly revolutionary. But what we're going to see revolutionary is when Dagnite comes out and they can start increasing the blocks per second on the network gradually. Once they start increasing it a bit further, then I think we'll see Casper go up to the top of the cryptocurrency charts and really see an explosion on the coin. 
That's it for the video guys, if you did enjoy please like and subscribe, also don't forget to join the Patreon for all those benefits that I listed earlier.